Let me bring it down from Kant a little bit to a bromide that I had drummed into me as a child, and maybe you've heard it. Happiness comes from making other people happy. Oh, yes. I, Frederick, <laughs> <laughs> who hasn't heard it? And that's the trouble. Let's aim at the day when people will not hear it anymore. Because it isn't true. It isn't justifiable. And the first question you would have to ask is, why? Why is it good to want others to be happy, but not yourself? And I suppose you will be told that, well, but they will work for your happiness and not their own. Well, it's like an exchange of Christmas presents that neither party wants, but that you have to exchange presents and you're not allowed morally to do something for yourself. Whereas what I say, you can make others happy when and if those others mean something to you selfishly. If you love them, then you want to make them happy. Fine. If you don't love them, that's not a moral crime. You don't have to love everybody. You cannot love everybody because it's a meaningless expression. You can love only those whom you value. And if they contribute to your happiness, you contribute to theirs. That's fine. But each one of you has to be selfish about it. Supposing somebody were in love with you and said, can, I can, love you because you're so bad, <coughs> so I sacrifice myself and I'm going to love you. Would you accept that or no, would you say it's the most... No, sir, I wouldn't either. That's the most insulting thing anyone could have said to you. And yet that's what altruism would demand. And there is a great Russian writer who tried to practice it, Dostoevsky, who did marry a poor, uh, stupid little uh, seamstress who, whom he didn't love at all, out of the desire to make her happy. You see, The end of it was she committed suicide. Now that is an altruist practice. That's what altruism leads to.